Nazis, gold and bloody action. This sounds like the premise of an American B-movie from the 70s or 80s, right? And it also sounds like the premise of Blood and Gold, the German movie I recently reviewed and that also was shown at the Fantasy Film Fest nights. However, this one was made in Finland, though in English language. How does this movie fare? And how does it compare to the German one? Hi there, it's Micha. If you want to find out the answers, then stay with me for this review video. Somewhere in Finland, Atami Korpi is digging for gold, having turned a prospector in his older days. And this day he hits it big, finding a gold deposit that guarantees he never has to worry about wealth ever again. Unfortunately, this all takes place close to the end of World War II. So he settles up with all those nuggets and heads on horseback for the nearest town. With the country under fire by the Nazi invaders and Atami runs into a Wehrmacht platoon, a bunch that was already certain the war is lost and are only out for themselves. Their convoy also includes a truck full of captured Finnish women, whom they use to perform some random tasks, as well as the reason you most likely expected. While that group of Nazis was on their way out, they didn't bother with Korpi at all, letting him pass. He soon encounters another, quite small group of soldiers, which shows more interest in him and discover the gold in his saddlebags. However, their attempt to steal his treasure and execute him and his dog backfires. Get down on your knees. <laughs> Fuck him up! <laughs> we got gold! And soon, they all end up dead. When the large platoon passes by the scene of this incident, they find a gold nugget in the hands of one of the killed soldiers. This sparks their pursuit of Atami, because knowing that after the war, they will be on the run for the rest of their lives, a nest egg to lay low someplace quiet is just what they are looking for. Now a merciless chase ensues where the Nazi scum soon realizes that they may end up looking for mercy themselves because Atami Korpi is a retired commando. He was a Finnish commando. He lost his home and his family in the war. He became a one-man death squad. He's one mean motherfucker that you do not want to mess with. Known as Koshai, the Immortal. A name that strikes fear into everyone who has heard it before. Do you really believe that he's immortal? No, he just refuses to die. You'll see what happens when you take everything from him. With nothing left to lose, he doesn't hold back and during several instances of severe bloodshed, the gold nuggets change hands more than once. And do not forget about the captured women, who also have a score to settle with their captors. So sit down and enjoy this no holds barred carnage. How many mines did we bury here? All of them. You? And you. It has been a while since we last heard from director Yamari Hilander, after he turned his own short movie about a special breed of Santa Clauses into the feature film Rare Exports back in 2010, his follow-up in 2014, Big Game, in which Samuel Jackson as President of the United States is chased across the Finnish wilderness after Air Force One crash landed, was his last movie on the big screen. Both movies were solid entries and also starred Yoma Tomila, who plays Atami in Sisu. Hilanda already showcased his skill for creating great genre fare there, and now he's back with a bang, bringing us his take on the exploitation movies of the 70s and 80s, but with more finesse and style. Fire! But first things first. Sisu is a Finnish word for which there is no direct English translation. It is the name of a concept for having a stoic and extraordinary determination in the face of extreme adversity. This is not about who is the strongest. This is about not giving up. We have a word for that in Finland. Sisu! Which the Nazis in this movie without a doubt represent. And boy, does Atami showcases pure determination. This is a wild movie, a brutal one. 
that happily leans into its campy premise. Where the German movie Blood and Gold teased gory goodness, but remains too undecided whether to be trashy or mainstream, Sisu fully commits and delivers on everything Blood and Gold promised and more. When we first see our hero, we are not sure how tough he would be, as ageism might make us believe he is too old to kick ass, but that turned out to be wrong on so many levels. Not only is he handing out pain left and right, he also takes abuse like a champ, surviving the wildest scenarios. We might have a problem. I don't want to spoil too much, but there is one instant where they try to hang him and another one where he has to hide underwater. The means he utilizes to stay alive are so crazy, you would most likely never believe them to be possible. However, those scenes are acted and filmed so convincingly confident that you can't help but to accept them. This is where the movie really surprised me. I was happy enough to get a trashy blood splatter flick that don't take itself seriously and might get away with low budget effects. But this movie was really well made too, with great acting, fitting the topic and more than solid effects. It was gory and had trashy qualities, but carried the best of those over into a premiere production, which somehow managed to pull off this balance act of being campy fun and still didn't feel ridiculous. In a nutshell, imagine a really fun and trashy story, but properly acted and filmed on a higher budget without losing its fun elements. I guess Atami is how I would imagine John Wick if he was an old man. Not as fast anymore, but still fast enough and tough as leather. This parallel mainly came to mind because he also has a dog he cares for, but like an old John Wick, he is experienced enough in that regard to send his dog away every time danger approaches with his little friend surviving the quest, always finding his master once it is safe again. Rest assured that I didn't share too much here. This was just a small portion of what the movie has to offer. As I said in the beginning, it is a wild ride, so make sure not to miss it and if you can, try to watch it on the big screen. With that being said, let's get to the rating. But before we go there, let me ask you to like and share this video if you enjoyed it so far. And if you're not a subscriber yet, maybe consider to change that. By also hitting the notification bell, you will get a heads up for most of my new videos. Now for the rating. I really enjoyed this one and it was my favorite movie at the Fantasy Film Fest nights this year. It was funny, brutal, wild and untamed, yet still highly polished to make the content shine even brighter. Pulling this off was a clear sign that they really did most things very well in this one, almost perfectly, so I'm placing the rating at 8.5 out of 10 points with a slightly upwards tendency. Do not miss this movie, especially if you hate Nazis and want to see their bloody comeuppance. And who doesn't want to see that? Even or especially if you are German yourself, like yours truly. Have you seen the movie too? And if so, how did you like it? Did you also saw Blood and Gold? How did those movies compare in your opinion? Have you seen any of the director's prior movies? Whatever you like to share, let me know in the comments. So much for now, see you next time and thanks for watching. With a country under fire by the Nazi invaders and Atami runs into a Wehrmacht platoon. After he turned his own short mob. After he turned his own. In the face of extreme adversary. Adversity. Mother.